Hello everyone, welcome to lesson 1.2, 7th grade math. Make sure you copy this down. Press pause. Learning target, finding sums of integers. Please also make sure you have this for your notes. Same sign, add, different signs, subtract. All right, here's question number one. Please do not forget to write this down. Also, I would like to see you draw this picture out visually. So make sure you do draw this out. All right, let's read the question together. It says your elevation, uh, if you don't know what elevation means, think elevator, right? You're going up or you're going down. So your elevation, the elevation of your land is two feet below sea level. So if we're talking about um, sea level, so let me use blue. I'm draw sea level I'm call it sea level and we are two feet below so I'm just going to draw two let's make this bigger so we'll do one two right one two I'm gonna call this zero I'm gonna say that's negative one and that's negative two so if we are two feet below sea level and then it says you add seven feet of dirt to your land what is the new elevation of your land? So if we add, so that means we're putting we're putting land to make this go up. So that means we're gonna have to go up seven feet. So let's go up one, two, and then let's go. And then we go three, four, five, six, seven. Well let's see how far are we above the ground so if we are at sea level and we add seven feet or sorry seven feet of dirt to our land what is our new elevation well we know anything on this side is going to be positive and anything on this side is going to be negative so the answer for this question is we are going to be at positive five feet above sea level all right let's move on to question number two I want you to write this down just for this first question and then not for the last questions, okay? So make sure you do write this down, press pause and write it down. Tell how the commutative property, uh, if you forgot what the commutative property means, it means that we can multiply or add in any order, right? So think of it this way, three plus four plus uh, five. We could add three plus five first, then add four, uh, or we can do 4 plus 5, then add 3. It's all the same. So just know that we can add or multiply in any order. So tell how the commutative property and the associative property, what the associative property means, that we can rearrange uh, things Okay, inside of the problem. Rearrange properties of addition can help you find the sum using mental math. Then find the sum. All right, let's write this question down. Let's think about what they just asked us to do. We want to do some mental math and we want to find the sum. So that means we're adding stuff together. Well, if we can use the commutative property, well, let's tell me how. Well, I'm looking at this question and I see I have negative 18 over here and then I have a positive 18 over here. The inverse of these will always give you zero. So if we forgot what that means, Let's see, what is the inverse or the opposite of 3? Well, the opposite of 3 is negative 3. 3 minus 3 will give you 0. So your inverse will always give me 0. Let's do that another one. What is the inverse of positive 100? Well, the inverse is negative 100. So what is 100 minus 100? 0. So your inverse will always give you 0. So if I was going to use the commutative property, I would do this. I would do 18 cross that off minus 18 cross that off minus 25 now that I know how do we do our PEMDAS well parentheses exponents multiplication division don't forget we do it from left to right and then we have addition and subtraction and we also do this from left to right so if we're going from left to right what is 18 minus 18? That looks like that's an inverse operation. So that's going to give you 0. And then what is 0 minus 25? The answer is just 25. 
All right, let's move on to question number three. Remember, I don't want you to write this down, but you should have it written down for the first problem. All right, let's see if we can use some properties to answer this question. We have the associative property and we have the commutative property. Well, I'm looking at this and I says, okay, that's a negative. This is also a negative. Let's see if we put those two together. So I have negative 22 minus 8. Well, all right, let's make sure we do with what they wrote. Plus a negative 8 plus 45, right? So if I'm looking at this and I'm trying to solve this problem, well, we know that if you have the same sign, what do you need to do? So same sign, we need to add. So I have 22 plus 8. Well, what is 22 plus 8? If you're doing some mental math, we know that that's supposed to equal 30. And we're going to keep the sign because they're both negatives. So that's negative 30 plus 45. Now we just need to solve this problem. Well, if they are different signs, we have to subtract. So let's subtract. We have 45 minus 30. Let's see. 5 minus 0 is 5. 4 minus 3 is 1. Do I have more positives or do I have more negatives? It looks like I have more positives. So my answer for this problem is 15. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Remember, I don't want you to write this down. You should just have it written down for just question number one. All right, let's see if we have, we can use some properties to solve this problem. Well, if I'm going to rearrange this, I'm going to try to put the positives together and then the negatives together. So I have 28 plus 4 minus 12. Remember, we add from left to right. Well, what is 28 plus 4? Let's see, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So we know that's going to give us 32 minus 12. We know that they are different signs. So if they are different signs, we have to subtract. So let's see, 32 minus 12. If we're doing mental math, we know it's going to give us 20. But let's subtract. 2 minus 2 is 0. 3 minus 1 is 2. Do I have more positives, right? Do I have more positives or do I have more negatives? It looks like I have more positives. I know 32 is bigger than 12. That's how I know I have more positives. So our answer for this problem is positive 20. All right, let's move on to the next question. Find the sum. Well, check this out. Anything adding plus 0 is never going to do anything. So they're just trying to trick you here on that one. So that means all we need to do is combine these two together. Well, do we have the same sign or different signs? Well, they're different signs. That's a positive 81, and that's a negative 63. So if they are different signs, we have to subtract. So we have 81 minus 63. Well, let's remember, I cannot take 3 from 1, so I have to borrow from 8. That turns into 7. This becomes 11. So what is 11 minus 3? That gives you 8. And then 7 minus 6 will give you one. Do we have more positives or more negatives? So we had 81 positives and negative 60 and 63 negatives. Looks like we had more positives. So the answer for this problem is positive 18. All right, let's try another one. Number six. Find the sum. Let's see if we can use the properties to solve this problem. Well, again, I'm going to try to put my positives and my negatives together. So let's rearrange this problem. So I have negative 51 plus a negative 36. That's a positive 101 plus 101. All right. So we know that they are both negatives. They are the same sign. So if they are the same sign, we have to add. So we have 51 plus 36. All right. So 6 plus 1 is 7. 5 plus 3 is eight all right they are both negatives so we're going to keep the sign so that's a negative 87 plus 101 well we now know that they are different signs so we have to subtract so we have 101 minus 87 well i know i can't take seven from one so i have to borrow i can't borrow from here so i got to borrow from here so i'm going to take from here this turns from 10, and now I'm going to borrow from the 10. This turns into 9, and then this turns into 11. Okay? So let's subtract. 11 minus 7 is 4. 9 minus 8 is 1. 
and let's see do we have more negatives we have 87 negatives and then we have 101 positives do we have more positives or more negatives it looks like we have more positives so our answer is positive 14 all right let's try another one here we go let's rearrange our problem and see if we can solve these this problem let's put our negatives together first so we have negative 117 plus a negative 67 plus 125 all right let's combine these two together we know that they are both the same sign right so let's if they are the same sign what do we got to do we have to add so 117 oops 117 plus 67 7 plus 7 is 14 don't forget to carry the 1 1 plus 1 is 2 plus 6 is 8 drop the 1 so now we have 184 but you also know they're both negative so we're going to keep the sign so that's negative 184 plus 125 now we just got to combine these two together well we know that they are different signs so if they are different signs we have to subtract so 184 minus 125 so can we take 5 from 4 nope we got to borrow that turns into 7 so now we have 14 minus 5 that gives you 9 7 minus 2 gives you 5 1 minus 1 gives you 0 all right let's ask the question do we have more positives I have 125 positives and then I have 184 negatives well it looks like this time I have more negatives than positives so that means my answer right here is going to be negative 59 all right let's move on to the next one describe the location of the sum relative to P on the number line okay so the way we're going to draw this is we're going to have to draw a number line and then I have uh, let's just say we have P over here and then it says we have to what add 5 so 1 2 3 4 5 so describe the location of the sum relative to P well it's going the location is going to be to the right of letter P why because we are adding five on the number line three four five okay all right let's try uh, another one describe the location of the sum relative to p on the number line so again if we take a look at this problem please write it down if we draw a number line and let's just say i put the letter p in the middle this time well let's see we know that positives go this way and then negatives go this way so if we're adding a negative 2, that means we're going to go to the left. So where would that be? That will be to the left, negative 2. So where is the sum of this, or what is the answer if you would have done this? Well, it's going to be to the left of letter P. All right, let's move on to the next one. Describe the location of the sum relative to P on the number line. So now they're trying to throw you off with another letter. But let's see. Again, if we draw a number line, we put the letter P, and we are subtracting something, where would that be? Well, we know it's subtraction goes to the left. So we know that our answer is going to be somewhere to the left of P. All right, let's move on to the next one. Use mental math to solve the equation. Well, let's see. Something plus negative 20 will give you a positive 5. Okay, so we, let's let's think about that. Our answer has to be positive 5. Well, if I did 20 minus 15, that would give me 5. But if I put 15 here, let's see, that's I have negative 20, which is more than positive 15, which would give me a negative 5. So that means I have to find a bigger number. And that bigger number is actually... 25. So if you think about it, what is 25 minus 20? That will give you a positive 5. Now, that is the mental way to do it. Uh, in my class, we don't do mental math this way, at least with algebra. This is how we learned in 6th grade. So remember, whatever you do on one side, you have to do to the other. Well, this is a negative 20, so we're going to do the inverse. So inverse sounds like reverse, or another way to say this is the opposite so what is the opposite of subtracting 20 that's going to be 
adding 20 whatever you do on one side do it to the other make sure you say that statement whatever you do to one side do to the other we're going to add 20 and what is 5 plus 20 it's going to give you 25 the same answer we got with our mental math all right let's try another one our last two questions it says use mental math well we don't do mental math except this one's kind of easy because we talked about this on question number one remember we talked about inverse so anything of its inverse is going to get you zero so what is the inverse of negative 71 well that would be positive 71 positive 71 and negative 71 will get you zero but if we were going to do this the correct way learning how to show our work we have two sides we do the inverse what is the inverse or opposite of negative subtracting 71 it's going to be adding 71 whatever you do on one side do to the other cross it off plus 71 what is 0 plus 71 71 drop the equal sign and we know that C is equal to 71 all right so our last question for today use mental math to solve this equation remember we don't we're not going to do that so we're just going to show all of our work well we're going to do the inverse what is the inverse of subtracting 30 that's going to be oops, sorry not 80 it is adding 30 whatever you do to one side do it to the other so what did we do we added 30 well ladies and gentlemen we know that same sign we add different sign we subtract so we know we have different signs here so let's subtract 1 1 0 minus 30 let's see 0 minus 0 is 0 I can't take 3 from 1 so I gotta borrow that turns into a 0 this turns into 11 what is 11 minus 3 that's going to give me 80 also do we have more negatives I have 110 negatives and then I have 30 positives just by thinking about that I know that my negatives are more so we know our answer is negative 80 alright ladies and gentlemen that is lesson 1.2 see you all tomorrow